Hello and welcome to CS230. This is lecture four, lesson four. And today I'm going to be talking about presenting content with cascading style sheets again. And um, this uh, one in particular focuses on using circles. So I'm going to be looking at the basic shapes that we have um, and can make with CSS. And I'm going to see how we might be able to do some nice effects for nesting circle shapes inside other shapes. And then most of the regular shapes, like circles and squares, rely on you manipulating the border radius property. And there's lots of information on the border radius property here, okay, on the CSSS um, um, page. It's really nice, really, really nice. So let's just have a quick look first so we can re review a little bit about circles. So, um, under border radius. So, this particular example really sets a border radius on a square. And you can see that these are filled squares, or these are you know unfilled squares and um, transparent squares and you can see that the border radius on the first one is 10 pixels and um, again I'm using the CSS tricks um, and the border radius on the second one is also 10 um, it has a, a very simple a, a very very simple three pixel size solid radius here okay so um, and something I really need to let you know about as well is that um, for the best possible support, you can actually use these WebKit and Mozilla prefixes with a lot of these. And that sometimes helps with smoothing um, and, and rendering displays. Um, you don't need to really worry about them too much. It isn't such an issue anymore, but you will see a lot of these sometimes, you know, because some, bro so, some, um, uh, some browsers will, will like to see these particular properties. Okay, anyway, so bottom line is we can change the border radius. The more we change the border radius, um, the different size borders we get and you can have some nice shapes here really okay and uh, well, what we're interested in is this are the circle ones so what's happening here is we're going to set the border radius to 50% and what it tells us is that essentially here and this this was a square so we start um, the radius at 50% along this edge 50% along this edge 50% along this edge 50% along this edge and all it really does is extends this kind of circle here um, to each corner and we end up getting circles so that's how we make circles so circles are really just squares another thing so that we we really have to start thinking about and looking at is if we um uh, when we're dealing with all sorts of shapes and sizes and borders and things is to look at the text sizes and the element dimensions and sometimes you know if we want to set a padding we want to set a margin we want to do all that kind of stuff and um, we can use lots of different kinds of units sometimes we refer to something relative to the text size and we often tend to use pixels um, but that's not necessarily a good way to do that and again the w3 schools website um, has a nice nice summary of all the kinds of units that you use for for describing css and we go back and have a peek here i've got this as well so there are lots of them See, see, wherever you've got some kind of length or size or dimensions. So you might have a, a number followed by a dimension like 10 pixels or 2 em. What do all these mean? So um, uh, pixels refer to px and they're the dots on the screen. Points are point size. You often use these when we're talking about fonts. Um, inches, millimeters and centimeters, of course, you know, are, are particular sizes. You can go and cross and try any of these examples if you go to the Doppeltree schools. What's really interesting too is that we, we tend to have a, a, to use relative lengths. So sometimes you want to have a length that's relative to some other length. And that sometimes happens when we're referring to boundaries or paddings around text, for example. So you might specify um, a dynamic, um, a dynamic uh, size and then, and then we use a dimension around that. So EM is, is the relative um, uh, to the font size of the element. So 2EM means two times the size of the current font. Okay. And we see REM sometimes a bit as well. And that's relative to the font size of the root element. So there's, there's lots and lots of these. And of course, percentages are relative to, to, to the, the, the parent element. And we saw that, of course, when we were looking at the border circle, where we were looking at the percentage value here. Okay. So anyway, we need to know a little bit about that first before we start to do anything. And it's worthwhile um, remembering that. Okay, so let's look at circles. So I'm really interested in making circles that contain text that move as inline elements and that also scale in size with the text that's contained. So, um, and there are pluses and minuses to this approach, as we'll see later. And, but sometimes we just want to make circles that have fixed sizes. And like, for example, when we want to use buttons, and we can use the button element for that. I'm not using them. I'm going to be using span as my inline go-to element, really. Um, 
and then uh, we basically finish up and I'll tell you really this is just about playing with different approaches you know there's not too much writing in this document really because we want to just go looking at the code so let's do that then um, and let's have a look at some of the circles that I've made okay so here are some circles when oh, you see I've done things like put hovers in here and you can see that I've got a 1, a 10 and um, or 1, 0 and 0, 1, 0 um, and um, I have something like you might need in your assignment, you know, which is we have text inside a button surrounded by pluses and minus. But if you look at this, you'll see that because of the size of the fonts that I'm using here by default, the plus circle is bigger than the numbered circle, which is bigger than the minus circle. That means that the circles are scaling to the size of the font. And in this particular one, I've got some nice fixed size or monospaced fonts and the circles all look nice. So. As I can say to you, as I said previously, oh, and here, of course, we have, a, how do we put a circle inside a trapezium? And, and how do we put this row of circles inside a trapezium and also um, center it and vertically align it? We haven't done that here, but, you know, we do that in the next lesson. So anyway, these are these are nice, um, but these are nicer, and but these look nicer. So there's this trade-off between having a fixed size circle or having a, you know, a circle that increases in, in accordingly, depending on the, the content of the inside. Okay, so... This is the tech, this is the, 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 the code to do this. And so really, and um, so I'm setting um, again once before I'm setting the, uh, the CSS and these are all CSS only. Okay, so everything is CSS only. So I'm setting the size of my font to be uh, 14 pixels um, and I'm going to make it uh, 24 pixels. We could change this now and actually make it points. see what happens just so we can see the difference between pixels and points if we wish we'll save this and really reload this document and it's much bigger and let's make this let's make the spacing um 36 point actually so that tells us the line height is a little bit bigger you know and we've done some strange things here to our circles as well so we'll just go back in and then um, and change that okay back to 24. And we're back as we were. Okay, so um, so I'm interested in having a number inside a circle, and I'm creating a, a, an element that has a numbered circle cl uh, class definition. Number circle, number circle, number circle. I'm using span as my in inline element. I'm using span because they're inline and means that one circle will flow after the other. If I had made these divs, each would appear in a new line because they'd be block elements. So, so I'm telling you that the display actually, even though it's a, it's a, an inline element span, I'm telling it to behave like it's an inline block. And then I'm setting the border radius to be 50%, has a two pixel solid, the font size internally is um, 32 pixels. Okay. And I'm setting the background color to be white. I could change the, the, the internal pixel size here to be 36, save it, reload and watch, watch these. They've just got bigger, okay? Everything's got a little bit bigger, so that's fine, okay? I'm using, um, so I'm using a before and after here, okay? And look, I'm using actually the, the colon before and colon after. I could use double colon, colons, okay? To put some padding in around these things. So I'm, 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 this is how the dynamism happens, okay? And I'm telling it to put some, this, and put some content, and the content I'm actually putting in here is a non-breaking line space, um, and this is the Unicode for this. I'm going to display that as a block. I'm going to tell it that the line height is zero. I'm going to put some padding at 50%. I'm padding at the top and at top and bottom, and and again, I'm going to um, uh, also add some spacing before and after, some padding around the size of the of the the numbers inside the element. So I'm handling handling a lot of the vertical size and the horizontal size by, by adding in before and after elements. And, you know, as we've seen before, you know, the good old days, we use single colons. Nowadays, we can use double colons. Here, save this, reload. Okay, and it still works the same, okay? So really, um, I'm, um, and that's what I'm doing, really. I'm, I'm adding some padding before and after, and I'm setting that handles the, the, the vertical and I put some padding to the left and right as well here. So I can make the padding a little bit bigger. If I make this 50, 5 and reload, 
you see that I'm shifting them across. But if I want to make them ver horizontally aligned, I can put padding around it here and make this one 55. Here on the right, and I'm, oops, I'm resizing them here. Okay, so that's all that does. Really, this section here handles the padding on the left and right adds equal amount of padding that helps with the centering horizontally. And now we could have created we could have created circles slightly differently and work with this. Um, so the uh, let me have one other small check. Okay. So one of the things I'm actually doing is I'm creating um, a font family monospace. So for the this particular one, I'm calling it tabular, and so it allows us to have elements that look nice, have fixed size fonts. And I'm just specifying that in my tabular monospace. And then when it comes to the class, I'm saying here's a class with a circle in it, um, number circle, numbered circle, tabular, and I'm just um, doing it this way. And that allows us to be able to do that. So what I've done is I've created, oh, so, so, so what I've also done is I've created a trapezoid. It's a zero height um, uh, CSS element. Um, as we've seen in the in the article um, on CSS, um, here, zero height trapezoids. And we come to the, the next one. And I'm just looking at my example and I'm wondering, you know, how come these just sit in the top left of this trapezoid? Well, we'll come to that a little bit more. Okay, thank you for watching.